Thank you so much, Sir Ed. Our New Testament reading comes from James 2, 1 through 10, and then 11 through 13, and 14 through 17. So I invite you, it begins on page 1881, and I invite you to listen as I read. Brothers and sisters, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in shabby clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters, has not God chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in faith and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? But you have insulted the poor. It is not the rich who are exploiting you. Are you not the ones who are dragging you into court? Are they not the ones who are slandering the noble name of him to whom you belong? If you really keep the royal law found in scripture, love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing right. But if you show favoritism, you sin and are convicted by the laws as lawbreakers. For whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well. Keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his or her physical needs. What good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, sometimes stuff is hard to hear. Even as I read it, I 
convict myself. But the topic, and I'll just say the title of this sermon, and it's a quick one today, so hold on to your horses <laughs> and your chairs. No partiality. No partiality is the title of this sermon. As a noun, it's defined as an unfair bias in favor of the one thing or person compared with another. Favoritism. A particular liking or fondness for someone. A liking, a love, a fondness or a taste for. The quality or state of being partial. Now here we go. Stand up if you have in the past or even today been partial to something or someone you liked them or he or she was your favorite. I'm standing so I'll have to Okay, if you're able, you don't have to, you know, all right, you've been a little partial. Okay, please be seated. And I believe that all human beings have been partial in their lives about something. I suppose we can't help it. There is no getting around our own feelings, and especially when you have those feelings of love, when you love someone. They're kind of your special person. And when you care for someone, as in those individuals that I see the CNAs almost every day wiping tushes and wiping brows and cleaning and making sure the person is comfortable. You can't help but like them. But the trick is to know these things about yourself so you don't go around the world making those that you don't have fondness for feel bad. Or some of us don't mind making others feel bad, especially if your face is not connected to your words. Now how, do, how does that happen? Well, Facebook. I understand some very mean, mean things are stated on Facebook and there are not very many repercussions. In the pa past few years, we've recently witnessed one of our leaders, probably more than one of our leaders, openly making fun of special needs journalists or telling women who are United States citizens to go back to their country. Or we have witnessed how a lie can motivate people to commit crimes against our country, our capital, and one another. While flying flags and while looking to hang the Vice President of the United States. Well, to state a, just a few things that we as a country, we can define partiality. And our, in the midst of all this, we have the word of God, this scripture that we listen to every week. My brothers and sisters as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, don't show favoritism. These are the words in the Holy Bible. Well, in the midst of all that, our scripture today seeks to teach the duties of discipleship and to urge the followers, us Christians, to fulfill them by being doers of God's word. And that the word states that Jesus is the Christ, the Lord of glory, who is coming again. And until such time, we are to be good Christians in a fallen world. That's the trick, ladies and gentlemen, to be good Christians in a fallen world. 
most of us stood up here because in our humanness, we're all partial. Every single one of us are partial to something. Now, our scripture keeps reminding us what it is. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him or her? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes on a daily or daily food, and if one you say says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and keep wealthy, but you don't do anything. What is that? Now, one of the things that we talked about a little bit in Bible study today was how somebody said on Facebook, Madam Karen, that we are not simply Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, but why don't we concentrate on doing good for one another? Just that little thing, doing good. So the other day, I was reading my neighborhood, those of you that know that I live in Palm Coast, Florida, and there was an article in one of those, you know, neighborhood, you know, kind of newsletters, and it said this, instead of people's differences, common ground focuses on what people in the community have in common. We all have common ground. And the first show focuses on faith, with two local religious leaders, Reverend Bob, and Rabbi Nero. One is the head pastor for St. Thomas Episcopal, and then the other one is the head rabbi for the temple. And it says this, early in the show, they discover that both these pastors have been teaching a weekly Jewish slash Christian Bible study together. The common ground I feel when people are attracted to this study are people's desires to learn and to discern God's presence and role in their lives, regardless of them being Christian or Jewish or otherwise. You see, it was important for those two theologians to come together and to figure out what is it that we have in common. And the name of that particular type of, uh, I'll just say show, was called Common Ground. And I think it was awesome because, my goodness, we have common ground in sin, don't we? Come on, we all stood up and said we got partiality. And it's easy to point the finger, like I did, to our other leaders, but Really, what happens when I'm pointing? There's three fingers pointing at me. We're all, all sinners. But with that, those three fingers can represent all those other people out there. Those individuals that I have common ground with. Now, we also talked about where we grew up. You see, I was taken out of United States and put into Nairobi, Kenya at the ripe old age of five, which meant that I never in my lifetime saw segregation. I did not experience that. You, Florida, those of you that have lived here for many years, there was something called the, the uh, water fountain. And y'all still remember, if you can remember a segregated water fountain, raise your hand. Ooh, see? Lots of folks. <laughs> so when I came back at the ripe old age of 12, I had to learn about civil
civil rights. But you see, by that time at 12, as far as I was concerned, everybody had a right. Everybody had a right to be who they are in their humanness. There was a lot of common ground. Whether you were a wonderful, rich, and I'll just say a powerful person, or you were a missionary, or you were famous politically, such as Malcolm X. So you see, all of those people taught me something because they came to the house. And you sit down and you listen to people. And of course, back in those days, you learned that children, if you were quiet, you got to stay in the room longer. If you made a mess or a fuss, Mom and dad were like, oh, baby, uh, you, you got to go, go to your room. No. If you're quiet and you listen, you got to stay longer. I thought in my life, when we talk about partiality and when we draw the line between who we are as Christians or Jews or Buddhists or Muslim, whatever that line is, there's one line that crosses all lines. Now, I think it's called love. I think it's called love. And when Richard was here, there was another one. It was called music. Music. Now, when you hear this man play, can you play something like kind of jazzy? Something that you would play in a club. <laughs> <laughs>
James is saying in here, no partiality. If you need something, ask for it. If you're suffering, let somebody know. We can suffer together. You ever, and this happened to a lady, and I'm sure I might have told this story before, but her husband died. And uh, people brought over, what do you call those hot dishes? It's in Minnesota. Casseroles. Yeah, okay. And all kinds of different ones. But then a man came out of her church and just knocked on the door and came in and gave him his condolences and sat. She's wondering, why in the world is this man sitting in my house? You see, in his culture, when people are grieving, you don't grieve alone. You don't leave someone alone. You don't just drop off a casserole. He didn't know what that was about. But he knew that he could sit with her. And that's what she needed. Now, at first, she was offended. At first, she didn't know what was going on. But after a while, when she started talking to him and communicating, she saw that this was something that was done in his country when someone dies. So this week, one of my favorite guys died at 102. This is him. Awesome little man, always stiffly well-dressed. And I visited him for three years. He let me come into his apartment, and he told the story of his life and his two wives and how blessed he was. We honored him as a veteran. He was an Army vet. And, of course, on Friday, I went to his send-off. He made it to 102. So it was a celebration. One of the vets came up and said this. He said, I didn't really talk to him much, but I knew we had a common understanding. We were both in the war. We knew what that meant in our lives. And he said he used to sit over here and he goes, every Sunday he was there, I'd come to him, and I didn't really say much to him, but I would just salute, and he would salute back. He couldn't stand up, because he was weak. And every Sunday he would come in the side door, and I was at the Methodist church over at, uh, uh, off of Old King or Old Tomoka Road or whatever that was, and they had a side door too, and he would sit right there. And every Sunday he would salute him. And he said, you know, I didn't talk much to him. He said, I didn't have to talk much to him. Because as veteran brothers, we knew what each other had gone through. We honored each other's souls lives by a simple salute. Simple. And he said, I'm going to miss him because when I honor him, I honor myself and all the brothers and sisters that have gone before. When he sat down, there wasn't a tear or dry eye was there oh, yeah. Madam Kim. Yeah. Beautiful. And I started to think, how do we honor those who have gone before us, whom we loved, whom we are partial to? But how about if we honor all of us 
with a certain salute across our heart. I honor Casey and Linda and your mom, Grace. And you know who used to sit in your chair. We honor him. He wasn't a veteran, but you see all of those people were people that we loved. Oh, man. And they made us better people, y'all. So let's honor our partiality as human beings instead of separating. For the blood flows. And we are here today because of the strength of those who have gone before us. So no, 